I mean, there are some ra really hardcore radicals who do, but but a robust democracy instead of a really vulnerable one. Yes. You know, and we've always, there's a kind of strategic vulnerability um, in that you constantly have to shore up the system because it's threatened by money or outside. Well, that's it. The people who that. would be disadvantaged by a robust democracy feels to us have all the, you know, I'm picturing playing Monopoly. They're sitting on top exactly. of the pile of the $500 bills. Yeah, you know, and you can keep your five houses. I don't yeah, want any of them, that's it. you know, but just don't take mine. Yeah. You know, that'd be awesome. I Yes, that's the part I just cannot comprehend, again, from my, uh, we were talking at break as well, getting my social conscience, mm -hmm. a lot of it, out of my first 10, 12 years in Sunday school. But just, right. you know, not, not theological, God wants you to do this or that, but just learning how to interact with, cliche at the time, fellow man, but you know, mm -hmm. just this is, there's certain ways you treat other people mm -hmm. and certain ways that you don't. Mm -hmm. And I just, I came away from that knowing that's what was so ready, the button so ready to be pushed around the issue of racial justice. Yeah. So, um, well, it's, there's a conflict there, I think, with a capitalist system because our, the way we've designed capitalism in the last 40 years. Um, it's designed to absolve everybody of the consequences of their actions if they have enough money. And I think the point of at least the Christian religion is not really to absolve you of the consequences of your actions <laughs> until you fix them. Yes. <laughs> so yes. you have to do something about that in some abstract or very real way. Yeah. 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 And those two things, I think, uh, have a really hard time getting along. Well, except for the what's it called but the kind of uh, interpretation of Christianity that says if you're doing well financially and in oh the Calvinist Calvinist yes. yes God is smiling on you if you are rich and if you're poor it's because you have sinned and you deserve it yeah. yes yeah that's a weird self yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just an excuse it's not for maybe being the worst but it's one that's of the worst impressions it's an excuse for being a jerk that's right um I want to ask you. We should we should just slow this down because um, mm -hmm. we're both getting a little like. <laughs> well, it's it's great, and I'm I'm still ready to keep going as long as you want to. But uh, probably yeah. you've gotten enough of me for the project too. So I don't mean to have yeah. not had yeah. enough of me, but we've had a chance to put plenty on the record. I think I think we've got quite a lot. You know, it would be wonderful to be able to do this again yeah. sometime. I think would be a good idea because I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, good. far away for a while. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to ask you sort of a closing, in a closing question, because we were alluding to the future and next generations. Mm -hmm. um, with the history that you've lived through, uh, what sorts of advice, or just sort of, not even advice, that's almost too specific, mm. but... Um, uh, sort of gift of values or uh, spirit would you want to pass to activists who might be coming along oh, behind it's a lovely us? Phrase, it's a gift of spirit. Because um, they're coming in for the hard work. You know? Yes. Number one, and it, it comes out of my interest in the lessons of history, is one, of, one bit of advice is learn where you're doing your work on the spectrum of what's been done. And it doesn't mean replicate, but it means put into, or you may choose to replicate some things, mm. but just understand that a lot of what's moving you to do what you're wanting to do now has moved other people for many, many, many years. Generations. Generations, <laughs> yeah. yes. And learning what their actions look like being moved by that same spirit. Mm -hmm. First of all, to me, puts me in a continuum that's just very energizing to understand that what I'm doing, while I'm not Alice Paul and I'm not Elizabeth Cady Stanton and I'm not, uh, you know, so many of the women who really are the ones that you learn about in history class, um, I'm acting out of the same spirit they are, the same impulse, the same desire for equality and justice, and it puts wind under my wings. Hmm. Um, so it doesn't mean that you have to um, 
do anything different with what you're wanting to do in your time with your tools, uh, but it does mean that you will be boosted by that, I would expect, I, I mm -hmm. certainly have been. Mm -hmm. And it also honors their work. It doesn't disappear them. As we were talking before about when all we focus on are the conflicts, it disappears, as the verb, yeah. <laughs> all the people who worked to bridge the conflicts and all, worked with goodwill to try to make things coalesce in an allied way. So it really continues to give life to the work that they've done mm -hmm. by your picking up and doing. Um, another thing I would say is um, always be an optimist and a realist. That doesn't mean pessimist, pessimistic realist, but be an optimist and a realist. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of people or I, I can think of some people I've dealt with over the decades who are so committed, so engaged, almost to the point of it's being a uh, compulsion to have to work on some of these things. But they don't do it in a way that truly advances the cause, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. They do it not realistically. And that realistically doesn't mean compromise what you're doing. Mm. It does mean pragmatic to a certain extent, but not at the expense of your principles. Mm -hmm. But it does mean also sometimes recognize that if you are too um, single-minded, even monomaniacal about things, you're not doing right by what it is you're trying to help. You are making people say, whoa, that's one more <laughs> crazy lady. I'd say this very, very <laughs> broadly, jokingly. But, you know, it does not um, try, try very hard to stay anchored in pragmatic realism, even as you're being the most idealistic optimist. Mm -hmm. Is that too much of a conflict? Of <laughs> I don't think so, because you, you, you know, on the one hand, you have this tradition and this um, line of, of activists and progressives that you're inheriting from. Um, but you also, you have to be able to improvise, you know, you sure. have to be able to respond to the new thing, the same old thing in new clothes that that's they're right. throwing at yes, you. Yes, that's because right. Because the fact that it's wearing a blue suit this time is important. That's right. You have to respond to the blue suit because the gray suit, yeah. you can't, that strategy won't work now. That's right. Um, and you might have a new technology to work with, you know, oh, um, for sure. you know, you have now, we have now tools at our hands. I mean, this thing belongs on Star Trek <laughs> <laughs> and I haul it around with me all I the know. time now. Oh, yes. And because of it, I mean, I could theoretically be live streaming this conversation onto a website right now. The minute it's happening, yeah, I'm not, just scary, <laughs> but scary good, you know, uh, yeah. the, the ways that you can intervene, um, and and create have changed. Yes. You know? And the kind of argument that they're that they're slinging now has changed. It's gotten it's gotten uglier this time. Um, I think than I remember yeah. people telling me about. You know, um, civic discourse has gotten so much uglier. I say, and then I think back and think sometimes again that history we don't know so much. I mean the. Civic discourse has never been uh, gentle. <laughs> it has never been gentle, no, and um, because of the whole conflict bias, right? Yeah. Um, and because, I guess maybe because if you speak in measured tones, nobody pays attention. Yeah. <laughs> well, and right now, right. it can, I guess the coarseness and the, the viri virulent hate stuff and everything just has a broader audience because of our means of communication it can get out there yeah. across the country in the twinkling of an eye yeah. or the world across the world and um, I go back to what you said I agree with you I think we are seeing a very virulent time I mean, people, millennial I mean the people who think at every millennium things go fatty it's anyway but you know there's a there's a real <laughs> cultural shakeup right now that there may have been equivalencies to um, in the past, but each one comes up with this new set of challenges, and the one the challenges in this cultural shakeup are really deep, uh, go deep. 
um, in terms of creating yeah. a world where it isn't the oligarchy or starting out with the, the rulers and the kings and the emperors and whatever, and then the oligarchy and the whatever. And democracy is, oh, again, let's not get into the recent Supreme Court decisions and everything, but democracy is um, really challenged right now to not be co-opted by money. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a big challenge, and it's one that if we level playing fields, and race, gender, et cetera, et cetera, we have a lot more people able to work more effectively on our side, if you will. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's one of the reasons those who hold traditional power in a hierarchical worldview don't want to share it because yeah. they know that's not good for their longevity <laughs> at the top. Um, well, I don't see why it's not good for them, actually. But but I think this is weird. This new set of changes to, historically, we have to be really imaginative. Mm -hmm. um, because, at least the way we tell ourselves the historical story, um, the world would change for people when a new empire came to town. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's right. Um, a new dominant culture... You know, would bring with it its military, its language, its money. You're right. It happened. It's gods. all the time. And that's how we did it. You yep. know. Yep. And then basically, you, and we did it again with the Americas. You know, this was a new empire coming to town and changing the world of the millions of people who lived here. I'm just right? chuckling. <laughs> uh, Randy Newman's song, which I love, "Great Nations of Europe Coming Through." Yes. <laughs> Hide your wives and daughters. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I I was joking with a friend of mine, you know, about this this problem of, of sort of cultural borrowing and appropriation, and I was like, look, we are white people from Europe, let us appropriate some of your stuff, because you do not want us to come liberate you again. Those are the that's, options. That's right. Yes. We will dominate you, or we will borrow some things, you know, and, and I cracked a couple of people up with that, but it's like, essentially, we are, we conquered each other for a few thousand years, and we mm -hmm. got done with that, and went outside that's right um and took everybody else's stuff but um then the enlightenment happened mm -hmm. you know um and that was one of the places where you can see that a new mode of change came into being change in a society change in a civilization coming out of ideas rather than out of having lost a war with the empire next door yeah right yeah um, and that, you know, we're still carrying that through, you know, I mm -hmm. like to joke that the Enlightenment had no idea how good it was going to be <laughs> <laughs> once it got done, yes. it's not finished. Um, but bless Thomas but Jefferson, is, don't ask what he thought about women's participation in um, politics again, how enlightened some of these folks well, were or were not. Enlightened enough, yeah. you know, but if they hadn't done what they oh, did, they wouldn't be doing this yeah. by a long shot, That's right? That's true. Um, yep. I mean, on the one hand, not so good on women. On the other hand, eternal enmity to the enemies of reason. That changes things. That's right. You know? Good point. Um, it's around the circle of the big temple where he stands. And yes. um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> but that's a different kind of... That's a different kind of civilizational change. Which, again, you know, we're imagining a new world. Mm -hmm. right? That's the level you're talking about. Yeah. Civilizational change. Minus the conquering army this time. So I think that takes how many hundred years we're expecting this was all pulled yeah, well, off. Well, you know, it's, it's still not, going it's on. It's still going on. That's it. I don't know. I'm not. Ex we didn't expect it was pulled off. What I mean is, we're expecting it to happen that fast. You know, think again. Like this is right. really overturning millennia of modus operandi. I like your phrase about the mode of change changed mm -hmm. uh, with the Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yeah, we don't go to change civilizations anymore. We just go for their stuff. Yeah. You know, their so oil or their coal tank oh, yes. or whatever they've got. Um, but yeah, that takes a, that takes a tremendous amount of imagination, and that may be one of the things that comes in the next generation or so, is such a new way of doing business. Yeah. Because maybe we'll come to realize that what we're doing isn't the same old thing. We're not doing conquering civilization changes yeah. the rules. We're doing big set of interesting ideas changes the rules and maybe that yeah. engagement will move. well when you said stuff too what I mean not getting into like 
green being green and all the, there's mm -hmm. very important ecological uh, movement going on which I hope feeds into not only better care of the earth if you will and relationship to the earth but also a way to transform our addiction to stuff mm. so that we um, don't get distracted by the what is it little shiny objects of stuff yeah away from not not that we should uh, reject things that are good for you know improving life but that we should not either be addicted to it it sounds like preaching I don't mean it like that but it, it's a big threat I believe to our progress when the stuff distracts us from um, things that matter so much more than that well yeah and that value is fixing to kill us yeah you know? exactly I, mean, I think yeah. it'll be interesting to see a shift because it's an aristocratic idea, right? My gigantic castle. Well, that's it. My yeah. silver armor. I my thought as I said, fabulous car. My yeah. you know. I thought but as I said, stuff. It really only applied at a certain economic level and all that. So yeah. I was being you know. even kind of classist and saying it. That it's way. statusy things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Status things. But maybe we'll make a shift. This would be so sweet. <laughs> from your stuff, showing the world who you are. I am asking a big ask. Universe. Yes. That what you do shows the world who you are. Yep. You know, um, because that that might help us. You know, move from having to doing. You just made me think of that horrible Cadillac commercial. Oh God! When I saw it, pardon me, and if this is somebody watching this in five years, if you are, won't know what I mean. There is the most horrible commercial of a guy touting his Cadillac and saying that that's what he works for. In fact, he uses the word stuff. Yeah. We have more stuff. We work for stuff. In France, they the actually French have a month of August. Off. Yeah, you would resonate to that. Gets but, that way. Yes. Yeah. I found that so appalling. It's really but, just a bald-faced... Yeah. 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 And it's I thought it was a parody. Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought it was a parody. And then it ended up yeah. being a commercial for Cadillac. Cadillac and not ironic at all you know and I but the thing is is I've seen that actor around in a few shows oh, really? on like AMC and stuff like that yeah. and he always plays the heavy oh okay he always plays yeah the assassin the jerk oh interesting. the guy who just puts the hammer down on <laughs> yeah. people because he's so I'm sure he may be a lovely human being but he His looks, looks yeah. like, you know, our stereotype of the, of, the, of the macho man Aryan dominator, right? That's right. So he ends up playing that guy yeah. brilliantly in most of the things that he does. But I see him in that commercial and I'm like, you're not the guy they hire because you like the French. This is not <laughs> how this is going to go. <laughs> you know, I saw a parody, of, speaking of parodies, I saw a uh, takeoff on it, let's say. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that. I, I have to find it. But it was wonderful. Uh, I won't even go into it, but it was very good. People, obviously, I was thrilled to see that people reacted to it in a public way. Yeah. And there was this wonderful uh, parody, I think, a black woman going into her house and commenting just in the kind of scenario that his was, but about she's working. Basically, it was... Well, anyway, we'll to make, it that. was maybe toward the direction of environmental uh, mm -hmm. improvement or something, mm -hmm. but it was it was super, so... Yeah, maybe you can find online the no, uh, I'll try to look the comeback to the Cadillac commercial. But uh, yeah, yeah, we that we've got that's the, just to bring it back to the women's movement. What we are working for in the women's movement is to have a world where male and female worldviews uh, approaches to the world, which overlap. You know, the Venn diagrams mm -hmm. we overlap by so much, and the little bits on the sides that are maybe uh, you know connected to more testosterone or oxytocin or something aren't really anything of import compared with the overlap that we're all you know we're the same in mm. um, as human beings and our needs and our um, way of living in the world and so on and and so much emphasis by the hierarchical people is on um, that little difference or, or uses the differences to reinforce hierarchy yes whereas we would use the differences to say look this is what can improve things if we value both the commonalities and the differences all equally yeah. 
And that's what to feminism is about. That's what feminism is about to yeah. me, um, and it translates into public policy that does not.